Okay, so I made a brick. But to understand why I made a brick, let's back up a little bit. Have you heard of Supreme? It's like a skateboarding fashion brand, according to Wikipedia. Not really my thing. Anyway, they sell items like skateboards, whatever this is, and a skate deck featuring Lada and the Swan. You sick fucks. Anyway, not too long ago, they put up an unusual item for sale, the Supreme Brick. It's just a standard red clay brick, like what you get at a hardware store for about a quarter, except it has a Supreme logo on it. And as far as bricks go, I guess it has half-decent reviews. Anyway, my cousin, having recently found gainful employment, did what any 20-something with a few extra dollars does and bought something ridiculous and unnecessary. This brick for $170. This brick for $170. So I thought it would be funny if for Christmas I gave her a similar brick with an estimated value of one one hundredth of the price. To cut costs and time, instead of red clay, which needs to be fired, we'll be using instant cement and some food coloring. So let's begin. According to Men's Journal, the size of the brick was roughly 8 inches long and 4 wide, and based on that we can estimate a depth of 2. Having the brick sizes, we can start by making a mold. I'll be making an SVG that will then transfer to a laser cutter, but you may choose to make yours with a mill or the old-fashioned way. So we open up our vector drawing program. If you don't already have one, you can download Inkscape for free. I'll be using Vizio, since I already have the license for it. You can also use tools like Corel Draw or AutoCAD. We begin by making a rectangle that measures 8 by 4 inches, plus the thickness of the wood you plan on using. Since I plan on using 3mm thick sheets of wood, my rectangle measures 8 inches plus 6mm on one side, and 4 inches plus 6mm on the other. In order to hold our mold together, we'll be making a finger joint. We begin by adding a few rectangles on the inside edge of our base. I am using 3mm width wood, so these are 3mm wide, and I added 13 along the long side and 7 on the short side, spaced evenly. Make sure the gaps in between are about the same size. I prefer odd numbers because this makes our mold reversible. Now that we have our teeth marked out, what we want to do is perform a fragment operation. This may be called break apart or exclusion on your drawing program, but the symbol should look about the same. Now we select any remaining fragments, if they exist, and delete them. Once deleted, we are left with a clean base with our 3mm teeth all around. We now add the walls of our mold to the design. This means we'll need to do something similar for both the long sides of our mold and the short sides of our mold. Having finished the box itself, we now need to add in the details. In this case, the inset with the outset letters. For this, we begin again with a rectangle, this time measuring slightly smaller than our base. Say, 2 inches by 6 inches, so we have an inch margin on all sides. We are going to add text to it, center it, and then we're going to fragment the text like we did the teeth. Remember, we're creating a negative mold, so we want to keep the rectangle, but throw away the inside letters. Be sure to keep the inside parts of the P, O, and the G. I also added these 3mm by 3mm holes on both the text rectangle and the base so that I can add pegs later. This will keep the text rectangle from moving on the actual physical mold once we start pouring. Lastly, I made these little trapezoidal shaped pegs which we'll use to hold the inner part of the P, O, and G letters, as well as the entire text rectangle. Your finished mold should look something like this. Notice the indentations on the two long wall pieces and the tabs on the two short wall pieces. I did not use finger joints here so that it would be easier to break apart the mold later. Also, notice the peg holes in P, O, and G, as well as on the base. Once you are done with your mold design, import it to your laser cutter, or alternatively, your mill or print it to a piece of paper that you can then use to cut your pattern if you're planning on doing this with more basic tools, which I would not recommend for this. Cut out your pieces and, well, I guess there's no point in letting this go to waste. Let's make a little sign out of it. Okay, back to it. Let's put our mold together now by starting with a base and make sure to flip it since this is the negative mold. Everything should snap together. Use tape to hold the mold together. Put tape along all the edges and make sure they have a good seal. Now use the tape to make a seal on the inside of all the edges. Make sure you have a good seal, otherwise you may get leaks. Use a little wood glue to hold the lettering in place. And be sure to use the pegs we cut earlier. Now that you have your finished box here, you've probably come to the obvious conclusion of issues with cement and binding. So there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, one, you can get wood treatments that prevent the wood from binding to the cement. Alternatively, if you're in a pinch, you can use crystal enamel. And if you're looking for something homemade, you can just go with festival oil. Now me, I'm getting something from the pharmacy section. And uh, this is just Vaseline jelly. It works pretty well. Now make sure to cover all the small openings and curves on the letters thoroughly with Vaseline. 
Alright, now having all your ingredients together, <clears throat> bucket of water here, something to measure out and pour in some cement. Good coloring here. Got your mold. Find something to mix it in. Of course, don't forget your gloves. <laughs> mix the cement following the instructions on the bag. And don't forget to mix your food coloring in. I would like to point out that I did reduce the cement with a bit of plaster to get better coloring. This gives the cement a bit less of a gray color. Now that your mix is ready, be sure to pour it into the mold slowly and smoothly. Make sure the mix enters all the small openings and grooves. Give the mold a few light taps to get rid of any air bubbles. Alright, had some issues with the camera there, but uh, you get the idea. Stuff peeled off like right away. Absolutely no work. So uh, Vaseline works really well for that. And uh, here's the finished brick. So there's the final product. And uh, I guess that's it. All that's left to do is uh, wrap it up and surprise my cousin with it. Wait, can I open this yet? What yeah, it? open it. Fragile. Yeah. Fragile. So, no, this is don't be careful. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of weird, but what is it? Oh, so, I made you a bootleg. Yeah, I made you a bootleg one for like two dollars. <laughs> and that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give this five stars and reblog.